بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show Guest of the week coming to you from Sharjah Television, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority As always I'm your host Ismail Bullock And today inshallah we want to discuss a topic that is quite prevalent around the world which is Islamophobia, where people have a phobia, they are scared, they have a fear of Islam. And we're going to discuss that in some detail with Brother Al Amir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair for coming on. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Now, as we mentioned, uh, there is something, and I'm sure we'll discuss this, but I know this is a topic where some people like to say there's no such thing as Islamophobia. On both sides of the fence, I guess. Mm. So we're going to be discussing that today, you know. Is there such a thing as Islamophobia? And if so, what is the definition of Islamophobia? And how prevalent is it? And possibly we could also, which I'm sure we will, go into what are the reasons and the way that we as Muslims can counter this Islamophobia? Yes. Um, as with many phobias, uh, which means, like you said, fear, um, they are there, and Islamophobia is not any different. It's been around, actually, um, for a while. Uh, Islamophobia as a word itself has been present, you could say, since the 70s um, in the English-speaking world. Although in other forms you will see it in the, the rest of the, the you know, uh, world. Um, and subhanAllah, what does it actually mean? It means fear of Islam. Now. A lot of people confuse it as fear of certain ethnicities or something like that. And, you know, we just need to understand that uh, a lot of people, but, you know, specifically the fear of Islam, the doctrines of Islamic belief, the principles, all these things is what people are fearing. Um, so if you think about it, one of the false equations is, for example, is, of course, Islam has 1.5 billion that's the mild estimate. Uh, you could say even closer to 2 billion people. And uh, what is, you know, and phobia means fear. And if you're talking about, does it mean the anti-Muslim bigotry, right? So, because this application applies that, you know, anybody who's adherent of Islam uh, has, you know, this Islamophobia is geared towards them. So that means one in five or even one in four, you could say, of every person in the world. That is huge, okay? Uh, now, if you say, if you look at statistics in the world, it doesn't mean that everyone is Islamophobic, but there are certain groups, there are certain individuals, certain people calling to it. And what we found out, you know, what you, when you will do research and you look about, about all those things, very interestingly, those people who have not met or known Muslims, they seem to be more uh, geared towards Islamophobia and some statistics talks about 30% of such people they don't want to have a Muslim as a neighbor at, you know or, or other than that you know some of those then some of the worst things like kicked them out of our country or whatever right to those who have actually known Muslims that ratio drops to 10% you see the difference of 20% just because somebody has met a Muslim or Muslima or has interacted with Muslim they are, tend to be less Islamophobic, you could say. Um, another t definition is basically unfounded hostility, that you could say, and the fear of Islam. And, uh, you know, lots of uh, universities in the West have actually started teaching Islamophobia in the universities, to the uh, credit to them, uh, because they recognize that this is uh, one of those things that, as racism is concerned, as other things are concerned, as uh, discrimination policies uh, by people, you know. Uh, it's become prevalent now as well. And they are trying to educate people about this. And, you know, and just because they're doing that, subhanAllah, interesting part is that the opponents of this, or you could say that the ones who deny that there is Islam for you, it's like what? You know, they are pretty much fighting against it. So it's like an ideological battle, you could say, I mean, you could log into social media and you can just see it for yourself how this has, uh, you know, uh, uh, come about. 
it's funny you mention that because um uh without mentioning names if i could even remember the exact names anyway but it's, it's you know i know for a fact in uh in some of the Western countries, I think it was actually in the same country, but two different Western countries, they have two particular um, uh, politicians who were very far right. Yes. And they were very anti-Islam, like ban the minarets. We don't want mosques, the minarets. We don't want this. We don't want that. And the more they became, you, you know, this have this Islamophobia and this hatred towards Islam, and the more they read about it, they actually ended up becoming Muslim. Yes. Two of these far right anti-Islam etc. parties, uh, maybe even three, but two that, who were quite well known. And they ended up becoming, one of them was a leader of one of these parties and he actually became a Muslim and later on his son became a Muslim. And um, so you, you see that a lot of this is, like you mentioned, by people who don't, haven't really looked into Islam. They've either just Islam by some Muslims they may know back where they are from, who may be have Muslim names and maybe Muslim by religion, but they don't practice Islam properly. Yes. So they could be into gangs, drugs, yes. for example, which is no way permitted by Islam. For sure. Or yeah. they may have seen some of these acts, the terrible acts that are done around the world, supposedly uh, by Muslims and supposedly in the name of Islam. And then when they read into the teachings of Islam, they see that Islam never allows such things. So a lot of it is based upon the people believing these scaremongering or these false information or this misquoting of Islamic texts, etc. Plus um, some actions by so-called Muslims. And then based upon this, this is what encourages and promotes their Islamophobia. And then you see how, like you mentioned on social media, all kinds of crazy stories spread, not just Islamophobic, generally, with no basis on them. Yes. And you find out that this footage they showed of a bunch of guys beating people wasn't a bunch of Muslims attacking citizens in this European country. It was actually, they were Muslims, but they were fighting over a football. It yes. was two different ethnic groups having a fight over a football match between their eth ethnicity and the other eth ethnicity fighting. But when the far-right Islamophobes put it on Facebook, it was... Muslim refugees Fighting. attacking innocent Europeans as they drive their cars down the street. And, it, and there's many, many stories like that. Yeah. So people, these are the kind of things that uh, you could say stoke the fire of Islamophobia. Yeah. When people don't really look into it, say, hang on a second, is this actually correct? Let me check. You know, Let me. Very true. But you know, the sad part is that these far-right groups have become prevalent to more than one or two countries now. It's like a trend that... Uh, even the, 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 the many people in the West are worried about. Uh, not just because they're Islamophobes, they're anti-immigration, they're all of these things, you know. So it's, it just goes hand in hand. And they had a statistic, and I said you know, I think earlier, that the majority of, of these countries that have very minor, minor, minor populations of Muslims, you talk about a few thousand, they tend to be more Islamophobic than others. And you know, one thing that we need to understand is Islamophobia, it's like, it could be described as state of mind, right? Where a person has certain belief about or a certain uh, issue with Islam and, you know, and, and has belief about that, right? But does, unfortunately, it does not end there. So some people tend to do action, right? We've heard all the stories about uh, throwing and, and desecrating mosques in many places. Uh, we've heard uh, vulgar uh, 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 phrases thrown at our Muslim sisters or, you know, Friday prayers, people driving by and, and you know, chanting slogans and all of these things. And so this becomes now an action. So this Islamophobia, it's not just state of mind, like some people would like to tell you. Even those, the far-right people, they'll say, yeah, there's Islamophobia, we believe in it, but we're just, you know, spreading our beliefs or whatever. But they are denying the part of it that is, you know, the action part of it, you know, which is totally wrong. And, of course, then it becomes a hate crime if, if, if violence is committed and so on. So, also, uh, we, you know, when we talk about Islamophobia, we're talking about where Muslims are, are, are in very small numbers and they're exposed to this. And, you know, a lot of times there's also, we see that this behavior that's 
Islamophobia can be hidden or explicit. For example, it can be discrimination against Muslims, exclusion of Muslims from social process, for example, uh, stereotyping, presumption of guilt, um, you know, by association, and, and finally, of course, hate crimes. Now, you know, we've seen these, like you said earlier, uh, some of the so-called Muslims committing these horrible acts of violence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there is a certain collective guilt placed upon some Muslims and saying that, you know, we should apologize and stuff like that. I mean, imagine we're 1.5 mil minimum billion. So each one of us has to apologize for something that an individual has done. And, you know, you don't say some white, you know, extremist somewhere, you know, does something crazy, you know, and then some white guy from 10,000 kilometers away has to apologize for that. I mean, that's ludicrous if you ask a person like that, right? Say, oh, that's ridiculous to say that, to ask that. Come on. So the same thing should apply to the Muslims. But unfortunately, this is the hidden Islamophobia that's there, right, that we're talking about. I, I think, like you said, I don't think that we need to apologize for something that you said the majority of the 1.5 billion, probably less than 0.1% support those I would kind say of... point zero one, you know, even yeah. less who actually have that messed up uh, ideology. But I, so I don't think we need to apologize individually, but I think it's important for us as Muslims, for those who are able to, to defend Islam from no, for the false. For sure. So what I personally I, like I to do, with that, what I sure. personally like to do is if any of these horrible events ever happen, of course I don't go and say I apologize because you know, I don't hold those views. I, we didn't do anything. But what I do go and say is Islam is free, free from that, yes. from such and such. And then I put the state. Many of the teachings we can find in the Quran and, and the I, Muhammad. And I would do would, the same thing. I would just add. But I'm also free from that individual. Who, that, I, I have nothing to do with this guy. Of course. Why am I being or you are being or, you know, huddled in, in in that bracket? And this is the Islamophobia I'm talking about. Of course, those guys need to be dealt with, persecuted, whatever they've done is totally wrong. And, you know, they have to be dealt according to the law and so on. But, you know, just because they've done something that, you know, oh, you know what? Yeah, I, Islam is free for them. But you know what? I apologize. No, this, you know what I'm saying? This should not be the case. Another way is that what are the, some of the shades that are res, uh, representing this Islamophobia? Uh, this is that, you know, for example, they say Islam is monolithic and cannot adapt to the new realities. This is the hidden form of Islamophobia. It's not so clear cut to say like, oh, Muslims are violent or this and that, right? This is more like everybody will say, no, we're, Islam is not violence. Of course it's not violence, you know? But when they say Islam cannot adapt or change, you know, this is like, you know, you're saying uh, everybody should have, believe what they want, but this is not the way. They're already telling you you're not susceptible to change. Another way is Islam does not share common values with us or whatever people say, with me, with you, with us, you know, these things. And Islam is a religion that's inferior, for example. It's archaic, irrational. A lot of these things people will say. And of course, they will say religion of violence and they have the ideology, like we said, this ideology, the violent ideology that some, some people adhere to is very small, but then they will huddle it all together and they say, Islam is like this, and this is wrong. And this is what we are trying to say, is that Islam as a religion is free from that. You cannot say that about Islam. You can say that about those individuals. I'll just hold yes. you on that point, inshallah. Uh, please join us after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Now just before the break, you mentioned a very good point is that for this very, 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 very small minority of people who call themselves Muslims and do these acts in the name of Islam, that it's not right whatsoever to label Islam with this fringe minority of people who claim to do it in the name of Islam. When you see in reality the teachers of Islam don't at all point towards or agree with or encourage what they're doing. Yes. 
it, it's just ludicrous to say that Islam is a religion for this because some people they've interpret or they whatever they, they, they come with these things and as with every nation every group even many religions in the world they are those who are extreme right they are those who you know I remember one time it was a discussion between uh, Muslims and other religions you know and they said you know what about uh, Muslims? Why, 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 you know? I said, Muslims, you know, we believe in, in Jannah and Jahannam, and Muslims, you know, who, those who believe in Allah will go to Jannah and so on, and those who do not, they will go to, to Jahannam and so on. Yeah, but they said, you know, you are labeling all of us. I said, let me ask you a question. If I don't accept Jesus as a savior, what will happen to me? They say, you will go to hellfire. And then I said, very easy. Allah says in the Quran, Kul ya kafirun. You know, your religion is to you. My religion is to me. We live, we move on, this is life. Your belief is your belief, my belief is my belief. And that's as simple as that. But people like to label, you know, and, and, and put you in a bracket, like I said, and huddle you and, and say, oh, you're, you're bad and so on. And uh, now, since we now hopefully defined or try to give its proper meaning, and Islamophobia takes many forms. Uh, we said, like I said, state of mind, and it could be now going into action which is, of course, a level that's not acceptable. And uh, people in, in the many places, those people who act against uh, Muslims because of their beliefs and so on, uh, of course, they've been prosecuted now, and we commend people to do for doing that as well. And there is, like I said, awareness among many people in the, in the world right now about it, so that's a good thing. Uh, so hopefully, like I said, we define it. Now, as Muslims... What can we do? Because we are, at the end of the day, uh, we, we have to represent Islam. Okay? What Islam is teaching us, and we have to live like that. And we, first of all, we have to f have faith in Allah's plan. Because for many of us, and I've experienced Islamophobia myself, and my wife have you know, witnessed, we witnessed it, especially her, because she's wearing hijab and so on. Uh, because of the hijab, uh, but you know how you react to it is what defines you know. So if I went violent or said some vulgar words against that person or individual that you know insulted my wife, that would not be good. Of course, you have to stand firm and protect your honor, but at the same time, you have to m make those individuals feel ridiculous, really, what they've done. But you know, kind of tell them, look. This is unacceptable, but at the same time, like, make them look like not so smart of what they're doing, you know, what they've done. So we need to have faith in Allah's plan that this is, you know, happening for a reason and that we have to be patient. And this is one of the things that uh, Allah is teaching us. Secondly, and this is very important for Muslims, we should never be afraid to be different, right? Because... You know, a lot of people say, oh, you Muslims, you guys pray five times a day. I could never do that. Or, so they're already labeling you as a different person, right? So just because you're like that, don't be afraid that you're different. It's okay. A lot of people are different. You know, a lot of people are living their lives according to what they believe. And it's, you know, to you is yours and to mine is mine, correct? So... Um, we know what Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he went through, what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, went through in Mecca because he was different. So at the same time, we need to understand that, uh, you know, that we are, it's okay to be different. Another way is to, that we have to be engaged in such communities. We have to uh, help our Muslim communities overcome this by being engaged in such societies in a positive way uh, contributing to the society at large, uh, for example, uh, social justice, uh, socially be like you know. I, I'll give an example in the West. For example, what uh, our Muslim community had done before was uh, helping, for example, uh, soup kitchen on Wednesday nights. You know, and this soup kitchen is geared for mostly homeless or less fortunate people. And I would say 99.99 percent of those people were non-Muslims, right? But you know. As Muslim, as a masjid, 
you know, stood out and said, every Wednesday night, we will be sending volunteers, we'll be doing this, and showing the people, look, Muslims care. Not only about themselves, they care about the whole society. That's the reality. I mean, if you're being a proper Muslim, you should be a benefit, a positive yes. thing yes. for your society, whether you're in a Muslim country or a non-Muslim country. If you're not doing that, then you're not, even if you're a practicing Muslim, then you're not really practicing Islam correctly. I, I read an article the only other day, it happened to be about, it happened to be about back home, and it happened to be about um, a particular community, and there was problems, and there was gangs, and there was drugs. And this is the difference, like you mentioned. You find a lot of Muslims who are actually the religious ones, and the practicing ones, they know their place, so they're doing things like you mentioned giving to the community doing the soup sometimes when there was i remember reading when there was snow in back home that they were um shoveling the streets away from for, for the neighborhood which mostly you know aren't muslim so there's a difference between those ones who are like practicing muslims they knew they have to give back to the community whether muslim or non-muslim they have to be a positive and good part of the community whereas these other people were your your average muslims not particularly practicing, obviously, typical young guys into drugs, into drink, into girls. And when they were asked about why you're selling drugs, etc., they said, oh, because we're selling them to the non-Muslims. Yes. And the hadith of the Prophet, the saying of the Prophet says, we don't have to respect them. Of course, there is no hadith saying of the Prophet Muhammad, which says you don't have to respect them. But this is just some nonsense that they've picked up in their mind that... We can do certain things you know, to non-Muslims. Very interesting. Those people, I read the article, it was recent. Those people actually don't respect themselves, nor the others. They don't respect, you know, as we always talk about, what are the rights of a Muslim towards Allah? What are the rights of a Muslim towards himself, his neighbors, his family, his wife, his kids, his parents? Those people, to be honest with you, have no respect for anybody. Because if they are disrespecting non-Muslims because of stealing or, or, or like, I, I've met actually a, a guy, a Muslim guy, who actually, you know, back in the day, this is what, 15, 20 years ago, when it was easy to steal credit card information, you know, and this guy was literally doing that. And I said to him, what are you doing? He said, oh, not Muslim, it's okay. Yeah, this is wrong. Oh, but, it, you know, in his mind. So then I noticed other aspects of his life that he was actually not respecting himself. He did not pray. He did not, uh, you know, do proper rights upon himself. And then, of course, there, his life was falling apart because sin upon sin upon sin happens. And this is, the, this is the reality. Generally speaking, when you find these people that are involved in such thing, who are Muslims, they in reality aren't, they have a very similar trait, which you mentioned is they're not religious. They don't yes. pray. They do drugs, they drink. So they do everything that, you know, an average, fairly religious Muslim doesn't do. So this is enough for you kind of say to yourself, hang on, okay, they may be, they may have Muslim names, but if they're, if they're committing offences against young girls, which of course we know there's many people who have got nothing to do with Islam and aren't Muslims, uh, who do that much more, but it's always the Muslims who get highlighted in, the, for example, in many stories that there was a group of 20 or whatever Muslim named yes. uh, people, for example, who were grooming girls. Whereas we know there's hundreds of thousands of middle-aged men grooming little t babies and boys for the same thing in a much bigger propor proportion than the people who have these who happen to be Muslims. But when you look at each one of those people, generally speaking, you can't pull out one guy out of a thousand and say he prays five times in the day in the mosque and has a big beard and reads Quran every day. Generally speaking, all of those guys were not people who were praying Muslims, who practiced Islam. They were all drinking and smoking and drugs and everything. So that should be enough for you to say, hang on a second. Should I have Islamophobia? Should I have a thing against Islam? Or should I just say that these guys are Muslim by name? They happen to be Muslims from Muslim backgrounds, but they're obviously not practicing their religion. So I'm not going to be silly and say it's a Muslim, Muslim grooming gang. I'm going to say, hang on, these guys... They're not practicing, they're not doing it in the name of Islam. This yes. is not what Muslims are supposed to do. Use my brain, just like I wouldn't come out now and say those hundreds of thousands of middle-aged 
Western men in the back home or wherever they may travel around the world to do disgusting things with small children, I would not name them by their religion. It wouldn't even come in my mind. Exactly. Me as a Muslim, exactly. I would never think of He's turning around. He's just the wrong thing regardless. He's just a sick person. He's just the wrong thing. I wouldn't whatever, say to myself, well, hang on a second. There's a hundred thousand. They're all from that religion. I'm going to say that this religion. No, because I know that religion, the religion is one thing. And the people under it who call themselves from that religion, who happen to be brought up in a family from that religion. And them practicing that religion is two different things. Exactly. So let them go and check. You'll find there's no Islamic teachings that say you can do this and do that. Oh, if it's a non-Muslim, it's fine. Groom them. Oh, if it's a non-Muslim, it's fine. Sell them drugs. Absolute nonsense. You know, some people try to be politically correct. They say, oh, we don't, we're not against Islamophobia. We may have Muslimophobia. <laughs> like, you know, anti-Muslimism. Basically saying, like you're saying, is the adherents of Islam who are, we are all, you know, we're humans, right? So uh, some of the Muslims, like you said by name, Ahmed, Muhammad, whatever the names are, that commit these uh, horrible things that you just mentioned. Uh, and people say, oh, but he's Muslim. And, well, I don't know if he's doing it because of Islam, but, you know, he's Muslim. And, you know, I'm against that. I don't like those people. Get them out of my country. Stuff like that. And, you know, proportionally speaking, uh, there are minor, still minor groups. I mean, if you look at these horrible things that people do across any uh, uh, population anywhere any 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 even non-muslims this is not something that you know there's a huge population that doing it that doing this but of course when a muslim does it it's kind of a little bit more you could say uh you know it's magnified the, and oh, it's definitely brought into the limelight yes, a lot yes yes and 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 media right now like i said earlier credit to them they recognize this that actually this is something wrong that they, even they helped establish uh, you know, uh, so they are actually some of the media out there is in, in, in the West. They are actually tackling it and they are actually saying like, you know, there's these ad campaigns where they say, what does it mean to have Islamophobia? I mentioned some of those things that people would not think would be Islamophobic, but they in the end are. So this is a credit to them. And we, you know, uh, have to say that. Um, but as Muslims, we have to show our, uh, you know, true face. Meaning that we, you know, a lot of times in the West, we go to the mosque, you know, we go to the work, go to school, and that's it. Now, when we are doing this, we have to go out there and talk to people and meet people, right? And show people that real Islam. It reminds me of the hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Mu'min al-ladhi yukhalat al-nas khayran min al-ladhi la yukhalat al-nas. The, the, the believer who mixes with people, socializes with people, is better than the one who keeps himself secluded away and yes. says, you know what, I'm not going to mix with anyone. People generally aren't religious. I'm going to keep myself to myself. The Prophet said the one who actually goes out and is part of society, part of community, is better than the one who avoids everybody, you know, and just says, no, everyone, I'm just going to go to work, go home. End of story. But now, obviously, we'll go for a break. And I'm going to continue on on that point because something else just popped to mind. So join us, inshallah, after this break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Now, we mentioned bit before the break the fact that... Um, the fact with, with Islamophobia. And what, what came to my mind as well was that many of these fake stories come out and there was a while back without mentioning names a particular european country where they said it is the one particular place within that country is now the it's the capital rape of europe it's the rape mm -hmm. capital of mm -hmm. europe mm -hmm. obviously they f found out that's nonsense but that was quoted like all over the place and um the funny thing is that in that same country, they had a very big open air concert or music gathering that was done every year and it had been cancelled. Why had it been cancelled? Because the women had complained that they were being sexually assaulted and harassed and groped, etc. and abused during this big event. And who attends this event was the natives of that country. It wasn't the, what, yes. you know, so you, you, you realize sometimes that, hang on a second, you know, you first you guys said this, 
It's complete nonsense. Or they do a very generalized thing where there may be certain areas of countries where you could say are a bit ghettoized. And we're not going to go into the reasons why are those people put in that area and they seem to be left. That's a whole other, another thing that I'm not an expert on that field. But there are certain areas that maybe you could say ghettoized and they have a lot of different people from those countries who have yeah. become citizens and have other origins. So they are, you know, but within those same societies or areas, there's also native people from low income. It's yes. not just the, yes. the ones who originally came from, from Africa or the Middle East or wherever it may be. And they've been there for one or two generations. Exactly. And in the area, yes, there may be gangs, there may be crime. And it may be, it happens in that particular ghetto area, there may be 70% Muslim. But there's also 30% who aren't Muslim, who also come from, whose grandparents or parents came from Africa or other parts of area. And whatever reason, poverty, whatever, no excuse yes. of course, but that's just the way it goes. They may get involved in crime, but those stories will be sold in this particular area. And they'll mention refugees, where in fact the ones, the refugees who came over recently are nothing to do with this crime. They're not accepted in the gangs because these are like brought up for the last two generations in the West. They don't have a connection to these fresh refugees who came, for lack of better words, off the boat to yes. this place. And a lot of the time when they interview them, the refugees saying, I was robbed last week by one of those guys. Because, you know, but we are sold or certain people, especially through the social media, make up these stories that this, this place has become the murder capital of this country because of the refugees. When in fact... It's nothing to do with the refugees and not one of those crimes has been committed by a recent Muslim refugee. Exactly. And you, and you said it's like a first, second generation already. And even, even, I mean, now we're talking about Islamophobia, but it's also spread sometimes into the colours of people. Back home, for example, there's a lot of crime going on. And in certain parts, they say, oh, this is because it's all done by this colour people. Mm -hmm. And that has become a very common uh, trend that... It, when this kind of crime happens, it's always this kind of color people or this ethnicity oh, that's people. Already but when you, what, again, but when you go to certain areas where the whole community is white, there are certain areas where the whole community, pretty much everybody is white, and they're all impoverished. They're all very low in the social class, unemployed. The same kind of crimes happen, if not worse. Some of the areas you can't step foot in. Even if you live there, it's hard to put your foot in there, let alone if you came from outside. And they're all white, but we don't hear people, especially in social media, Talking pushing it out yes, because exactly. they always want to pick on the minorities or it's these people because or it's this colour people. Of the day, like I said, when you're a minority, be it racially or by religion, it's easy to pick on. Easy pickings, right? And I'll give you uh, some of the practical things that happened to my friend, actually who's from uh, one of the Middle Eastern countries. And, you know, he lives in the West for a long time. And he was at work. And particularly white guy. You could say native of that country. He said, hey. Hey. And he's like, he turns around. And he's like, who are you calling? He said, hey, camel jockey. He said, what? He said, hey, camel jockey. He said, you calling me camel jockey? He said, yeah, you. So this is like a, you know, a racial, Islamophobic kind of statement for people from Middle East. That mm -hmm. it's used in the West, unfortunately. I hate to say it by, by this, but this is how it is. And then you know how it is, what response he had, mashallah. I mean, he's a practical guy. He's a very good guy. But he's a strong guy. He could actually could have beaten him up. If you think about it, right? He's taller than him and all this. But he didn't do that. He says... Hey, man, let me ask you a question, he goes. He said, yes, 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 what's up, camel jockey? Yeah, tell me. Like, he's trying to instigate, subhanAllah. You see how this goes. He keeps going into this violent, he's expecting a violent outburst, right? And this is happening in a, in a, in a blue-collar workplace, right? He goes to him, he says, uh, you guys, you actually, particularly yourself, right? You worship Jesus, don't you? Like, you know? Uh, or like, you, you, you see him. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, you know, Jesus was camel jockey. He said, you call him like that? Like he was trying to tell him, look, this is a ridiculous statement what you're trying to say. And he said, subhanAllah, he said to him, sorry, you're right. This is something I didn't think of. You know, so it was like a, in a way that uh, this person was ignorant 
of his own religion, of his own whatever, right? So in a way that, and that was respectful at the end of the day. Then after that, you know, he would call him by his name. And he's like, you know. But this, I, is, a, this is a very good example because this is how this brother there, he is acting like a Muslim. We know the Prophet Muhammad, if we look in his life, that's why that's I keep saying is it's also important for people who are Muslims. And sometimes, unfortunately, like I said. And, and just to clear, to make something clear, just because this person is from another religion doesn't mean that this religion teaches him this. It's very of interesting. Course, of this course. Way we need to say this. Nor should we. No. So this person was just ignorant of everything. Ignorant of, 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 of my friend's religion. Ignorant of his own religion. And also for us, we, it's not where if they insult our religion, we should insult their religion. This no. is not the way Muslims no. should be. No. He should, like you said, he should have patience. He should reply in a good way. He should educate the guy if he can, like, like, your, like your friend did. And this is something that if the Muslims in reality, were practicing Islam correctly, so, so much Islamophobia would, would be gone. Because if Muslims were correct, practicing Islam properly, they would be taking food now and again to their next door neighbor. We know that Islam, that the Prophet Muhammad said that I thought that neighbors were going to be put in the list of people who inherit from you when you die, like your mother, your father. Prophet, Prophet Muhammad said he thought that Allah would reveal that the neighbors would be on the inheritance list in the will because the, the amount of times that Angel Gabriel came down and told him that Allah Take says this neighbor, yeah. about the neighbor, about the neighbor. And we know that, the, the, that this is whether Muslim or non-Muslims and the scholars, exactly. scholars, we're talking about classic, what people may say, strict orthodox scholars from today until back in 1,400 such years ago, they've all said, none of them said, not for the non-Muslims, Ignore them. They all said the neighbors, it's not just the one next to you. Some of them say it spans as much as 30, 40, you're like your neighborhood. And they said Muslim or non-Muslim you know, comes in these hadiths about treating your neighbors well. The one who does not make his neighbor safe from his harm I, 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 will not I enter paradise. Back, back home, uh, you know, where you could say half of the country is Muslim, half of the country is not Muslim. When we spoke to the non-Muslims, you know, interaction happens all the time, of course, uh, workers, co-workers and so on. And they would say to us, oh, we are excited for Eid al-Adha. And they were like, why? You know, yeah, because you guys, when you are uh, doing Udhiyah, when you are doing Qurbani, it's like, yeah, we're going to get the meat. <laughs> like, you know, it's something they look forward to because you, you as a Muslim, you have to distribute to your neighbors. And, you know. And this is besides that others. And they're like, you know what? We're not going to get any meat. We're not buying anything because we know we're going to get so much from the Muslims because our freezers are full and all of this. And, you know, it's just a nice gesture, you know, and it's like something that, you know, that the Prophet, like you said, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi talked about this. Another thing that I mentioned is that how you tackle uh, Islamophobia. I, I don't think we have much time left, but uh, many years ago, I would say 15 years ago, without mentioning the, the, the places, we know that there was an attack of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was a verbal attack, there was uh, certain cartoons and whatnot, uh, ideological, in the name of free speech. And we as Muslims, we felt really hurt. I remember going to the masjid and people were crying, you know, because of sadness that we faced of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being attacked. But one of the brothers, may Allah reward him, to, you know, even to this day I think about it and I always mention him. He came up with a great plan. He said, brothers, this is not the time to sit down. Yes, our Prophet got attacked, but he said, let's show them who Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was. So he came up with the idea. And let's see this great idea. He said, let's make an exhibition about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam." What is the exhibition? He contacted a certain company far away, a Muslim company, run company. They said, make us posters. And each poster was a huge poster, about two meters tall, about one and a half or one meter wide, in high definition, talking about Prophet Sallallahu as a husband, as a leader, as a neighbor. And we educated or we talked and we, we had volunteers. And there was 20 of these stations. And we rented a huge hall in the city. And we invited the whole city to come. We invited the media and everything. And they would come around to each station as if you're in a museum, you know, in a way. 
and they will, this in the volunteers will talk about Prophet Muhammad as the military leader and how we treated uh, the prisoners, for example, or how we treated his neighbors, how we treated his enemies, how we treated, you know, all of these things. And people were so impressed and they're like, and they said, you know, we're sorry, even though they were not the ones who were doing that. But it was an awareness thing and it felt so good. And then this was replicated throughout the communities. Right. And this is the reality, you know, this is how the Muslim should be. Not the average Muslim who's not very religious, for example, going out and burning flags no. or screaming and shouting or committing violence. First of all, you've done nothing to honor the Prophet Muhammad by doing that because you doing that is against the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad in the first Absolutely. place, which you supposedly are defending his honor by doing something that he would never have That's approved of teachings. and against his teachings. So you are helping them to dishonor his honor. Oh, we actually, you are, I don't want to say proving what they're, they're, they're proving and to they're, themselves. And, they're, they're proving they, to and themselves. they have this, they are trying to promote this completely false Or they're justifying context. what they're doing. Oh, look, oh, look what I said, they're doing it. Exactly. So we as Muslims, and we know there's so many different words of wisdom from like scholars who said like, you know, if a dog barks at the sun, it has no effect on it. So we know that no matter what they say about the Prophet Muhammad, his exactly. life is authentically written down and we know the reality. Exactly. But we as Muslims come out and show, to him, show them. Nowadays we have media. It, even, I mean, we've got a couple of minutes now, maybe I'll end on this, but this is how. Anything happens like this, we go out and we show them the reality of Islam. The reality of the Quran, the reality of the Prophet Muhammad, in a positive and, uh, inter and, and you intellectual know, and the way. The last point I wanted to make is, you know, for us Muslims, what needs to be done. The last thing is to, if we don't know what to do, how to uh, defend Islam, or if we are inexperienced, we should go back to the scholars and ask them, especially those who are experienced in this aspect. And of course, and I'll end on this, if we go back to the true scholars, the ones we know, yeah. are, uh, they will never say to us to go out and demonstrate no, no, but and I mean, to they would, all kinds they would of even, other things. They will always they say to us, educate us the people. Practically what, or give us ideas, they would lead us. And you know, and because certain people can make a mistake, right? So I mean, we, we, we need to go back to the scholars at the end of the day, really. And uh, think before we act, definitely. Yes. Well, inshallah. It's been an interesting topic and we hope you found it interesting and somewhat beneficial. I hope we can take some of these lessons away and show people what Islam truly is, inshallah. And until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.